his yellow rubber duck. This is the story of Fumio, the yellow rubber duck. Fumio is from China. <laughs> <laughs> he was created in 1991. In 1992, he was sent to Beijing, created, put in a cargo ship, and sent towards the coast of Los Angeles. When, the same time the Yugoslav War broke out in 1992, that ship cap capsized off the southern coast of Japan, and 29,000 bright yellow rubber ducks spilled into the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> this is a true story, you can Google it up. <laughs> 19,000 ducks hit the coast of New Guinea, Australia, New Zealand, <laughs> and all the way over to Chile, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. The other 10,000 ducks wandered east and then headed north and got stuck in the subpolar gyro. <laughs> The Atlantic current and the Pacific current in which things get stuck in between Siberia and Alaska. For six years they remained here. But in 1998, about 4,000 of the ducks hit the coasts of Alaska. The other 6,000 went through the Bering Strait and frozen into the ice. And in 2003, 3,000 of those defrosted and started appearing on the coasts of Maine, Massachusetts, Florida, and Brazil. The other 3,000 went to Iceland and some in the next three or four months will be landing on the northern coast of Scotland. One intrepid duck. <laughs> Fumio was stuck for all oh, about four or five years in the subpolar gyro. But due to a seismic shift in the Earth's magnetic field, <laughs> little Fumio fell right out subpolar gyro by some miracle and landed on the coast of the Yaka Sami Beach in Tokyo. Here, at precisely 3.33 in the afternoon on the third Tuesday of the third month of the year, the precise moment when Milo Dukanovich would take a lonely walk on the beach. When Milo turned around, looked at the beach, he saw Fumio bobbing up towards him and they have been best friends ever since. <laughs> you could say they are like uh, Batman and Robin, or you could say they are like the dynamic duo. No way, that would be redundant, because Batman and Robin are the dynamic duo. For the past three years, Milo and Fumio have been best friends, and they spend their most philosophical moments in the bathtub. <laughs> Today being perhaps their last day on this earth, those moments will be a little bit more philosophical than usual. <laughs> <laughs>
Should we go down with the building tonight when they imploded at five in the morning? Or uh, perhaps we could uh, go to Brazil and get a microloan and buy a bicycle <laughs> and put a shadow puppet theater on the bicycle and do little puppet shows for children in the Brazilian countryside. Or go down with the building when they imploded at five in the morning. Or go to Brazil and get a microloan and a bicycle. Or go down with the building or go to Brazil or go down with the building or go to Brazil to be or not to be. <laughs> That's the question. Whether it is nobler <laughs> in the mind to suffer the slings and the arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them <laughs> to die, to sleep no more, and by asleep to say we end the sorrow and the thousand natural shocks the flesh is heir to. And it is a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep, but chance to dream. There's the rub. <laughs> For in that sleep of death, who knows what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the pangs of undespised love, the insolence of office, the law's delay, when he himself might his own quietus make with a, a bare bodkin? Who would Fardell's bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those hills we have and fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. 